Hey guys, it's Justin back with an engineer's perspective and today I'm gonna do a kitchen knife call it collection overview. I don't really like calling it a collection because I used every single knife. I use every single thing so nothing is just bought to collect. Um, but I will say there's I didn't realize how much excess I had until uh, I got everything up for this. So uh, everything's kind of over here. It's gonna work from right to left and just show you. I'm gonna try not to spend too much time explaining just because this will take forever if I do that. But I just kind of wanted to show you guys what I'm working with. So when I talk about kitchen knives, you kind of understand the where I come from and what my experiences are with. So, and there's nothing that's crazy nice in here, but we're just gonna start right to left and just move on through. So here's an eight inch Victorinox Fibrox bread knife. Um, that's that. I've got a bunch of these little Pampered Chef pairing knives that my mother-in-law gives to me. I'm just gonna cycle through these real cheap ones quick. This is one of the Wustoff, I don't even know what it's called. It's like their gourmet line, it's stamped, but just like cheap pairing knives. I don't really like this pairing knife shape. I much prefer the Victorinox classic pairing knife shape for that skinnier blade and better behind the edge geometry. So there's the super cheap stuff out of the way. Now we'll start with this knife roll. This is the Chef Knives to Go knife roll here. Uh, start off with a steel here. Sorry, this is a Zwilling Pro Steel that was sold separately and I got it for like 20 bucks. So nice. Over here, Cutlery and Moore was discontinuing, or rather Chef's Choice, I believe, is discontinuing this uh, line. This is their Trizor Professional line. It's made in AOS 10. Um, the steel actually seems to be pretty decent, even though these things are dirt cheap. It's a 10 inch slicer. Um, it's actually a pretty nice knife and I got it for like $35. And then sharpening the hardness feels like it's up there. I like it as a sharp, as a, a slicer, so performs its function flawlessly. Here's my beater uh, Victorinox Fibrox 10 inch chef's knife. On this one I experimented with doing like a 70-30 uh, edge on it and I didn't really like it. So but I, that one's kind of messed up because of that. Here's something nice. I really like this knife. This is a Wustoff uh, classic 7 inch Santoku. Uh, all the Wustoff Asian knives come with a pretty thin 10 to 12 degree angle that rolls. Um, but I've had some luck using diamonds on it to boost that up, but generally I'll uh, micro bevel their Asian knives. But really like that knife. It's nice and thin and slicey. Another Wustoff, I, or Wustoff here, this is the Icon Classic 3.5 inch pairing. Love this pairing knife. You kind of see I like the thin pointy blade of pairing knives because I like being able to turn easily and I prefer this fatter handle because the Victorinoxes are okay but I have a hard time like getting leverage on the handle to turn it where with this fat back so it's a skinny neck but that wider back helps me turn so I prefer that really like that little pairing knife here's a Tojiro I don't know what this is, a 270 millimeter bread knife that came with for free with another knife that I bought that we'll get to. So I like that it's super thin. It's actually also pretty good for slicing through hot proteins and such. So like that. On to the next knife roll. Not much in here because it's kind of emptied out. But I've got my nicest steel here. This is an F Dick Dickeron 12 inch sapphire cut steel. Very high end. It's about as nice a steel as you can get, really. It's very fine cut. Um, I like it. I like it using it on German blades. I've used it on Japanese blades too, just to, because people say you can't. These are actually extra hard, so they have sapphire coating on them, so they're like 66 Rockwell. 
They just don't do anything to anything above like 60 Rockwell. It does kind of work on like VG10 and AUS10, but not that well. What it does work great on are more Fibrox knives. This is like the six inch utility or something. This is a great knife, honestly. It's, you know, thin and flexible, great behind the edge geometry like they always have, the Fibroxes anyways. Um, the way the handle angles, you get really great clearance, knuckle clearance on a, on a board. So that's a great knife. Another cheap great knife is the Victorinox Fibrox 7-inch Santoku. Um, I like the Santoku shape, by the way. Um, very nice profile, super thin behind the edge, super thin st spine, still very stiff. This is a great knife. Like, if this was in a better steel, this would be the perfect blade for me, honestly. It's got great geometry top to bottom. It's stiff, good profile. Love that blade. I find the handle to be very comfortable. It's very low maintenance. So that's a great knife. One of my favorites. Don't use it much. Here's a Mercer Millennia 10-inch serrated bread knife here. I like the bread knives that have the exposed heel, just because you can get all the way down to a cutting board when you're working with it. But for me, this one's too thick. It's too thick of a bread knife. And then also I prefer the serrated tip versus the like round. I like kind of the, the point. But... All right. That's all that's in that roll. And now we're gonna start getting into the fun stuff. Or actually, I'll, I'll lie. Eight inch Fibrox flay knife. So that's all that is. Now fun stuff. We'll start here. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna sell this one. So it's in the box, ready to be sold. But this is a Tojiro DP 170 millimeter bunka. Um, I find that the grind starts too low on this one, so it's a little bit wedgy. And I wish I had a teeny bit more knuckle clearance, but mostly it's because it's wedgy. I could by hand grind this up and uh, make it a better slicer. I haven't decided if I'm gonna do that yet or not. I'm leaning towards not, as you can tell. But if I did, I think this would be a sweet, nice uh, kind of utility size knife, which is kind of what I got it for. Something to work on small cutting boards which I do a lot just because uh, it's just nice to have one small cutting board that we kind of use throughout the day. Here is a Kohetsu, I don't even know what you call the line, Kohetsu Blue Number 2 70 millimeter Petty. Um, it's Blue Number 2 sandwiched between two stainless layers, but they're semi-stainless, as you can see. And I've also thinned this one out so this is a sweet little knife. You get, it's a very blocky handle, so you get great turning and leverage on it. It's very short, very slicey. It's blue number two, takes a sweet edge. Um, I will say it didn't come very straight at all. So, and you know, kind of ugly handle fit, but it's a great sweet little blade there. Next up is a eight inch chef knife. It's the, who makes it? Messermeister. Messermeister Meridian Elite Stealth. So that means it's the thinner, lighter version. This is a great knife. Very tall at the heel, which I like. Um, very nicely fit and rounded handle and bolster. It doesn't have a full bolster. Very thin behind the edge. And because it's the Stealth model, it has a thinner spine It's and uh, it's lighter. It's thin behind the edge and it's very tall, so there's a lot of time for it to thin out from spine to edge. This is a really nice cutting knife. This is really great. I wish that the tip wasn't so far upturned. I like a downturned tip, like on Sentokus and most Japanese Gyotos. Um, that's my criticism of the knife. And I wish it had a harder heel, but it's pretty rounded for the rock chop. But this is a great, Great knife. Next up, another Santoku. This is the Tojiro DP 175, 180 millimeter Santoku. 
you know, great robust blade that cuts pretty dang well and is a great price. You know, this, I really like this knife too, just because it's, it's my beater Japanese blade right here. This is my Japanese blade beater of choice. And that's what I do all, a lot of my sharpening experimentation on because it's got the cladding. It'll be easy to thin out down the line. Here is a Shun Classic uh, six inch utility. Uh, very thin behind the edge. I think Shuns look very pretty. Not a huge fan of the VG Max and I find the handle to be much too skinny for my hand. I don't like skinny little handles. Once again on the skinny handle train, this is a Zwilling uh, Diplome, I believe is their series. Uh, you can only get them from Cutlery or more, but it's made by Miyabi in the Miyabi Fusion handle pattern. I think it's a five and a half inch prep knife. It's got FC61 steel at the core. Decent steel, geometry is just okay, um, but the handle is so skinny and the blade is so tall that when you're cutting with it, it wants to turn in your hand. And if you choke up on it, you're using up a lot of the blade and it's so thin that it really digs into your hand. So it's kind of poorly designed from here back, in my opinion. Next up, whoop, don't lose that. Tojiro DP 150 millimeter Hanasuki. Love this knife. It's like a 90-10 bevel, but the back is slightly uh, concave, so that's nice. Um, uh, it's got a thicker behind the edge at the heel and thinner at the tip, meaning uh, you can push this VG-10 straight through chicken bones at the heel. So I love working the joints and stuff and bones with the heel. And then I love using the tip to get in the more delicate places and then to you know run along bones. This asymmetric grind is absolutely the way to go for a Hanasuki because you have the choice of very precise cuts on the flat side, getting right up next to it. And then on the rounded side, because it's not a flat grind down, it's kind of rounded down into there. You can kind of control your angle to see how close you get to the bones without actually catching into them. Whereas on the flat side, you catch into the bones. And then comfortable handle, easy to sharpen. I've had great, great luck with this VG10 on poultry. I've broken down a ton of chickens with it. Great knife right here. Great freaking knife. Everything about it. Design, the whole kit and caboodle. Here's a Kikuichi. 150 millimeter Petty. Uh, it's an AUS 10. This is like an 80 20 uh, edge on it and grind. Cuts really nicely. I like the handle, especially because it's a little bit bigger on the back, so I can get some good leverage and I can make this knife feel like it's longer than it really is. Um, wish it had a little bit more knuckle clearance, but it's a utility knife, so I really like this one. Steel, uh, this AUS 10 performs like Tojiro's D or VG10. So pretty decent. Here is a Victorinox uh, seven inch Santoku Grand Maitri. Uh, super great knife for the price. I wish it cut a little bit better than it does. So I've thinned out this knife a little bit. I'm still in that process to make it cut better. So I'm working on that, but best knife for the money. It's better than the Mercer's. It's more expensive, but best knife for the money or for German cutlery right there. All right, on to the knife block, which is a Schoon knife block. Random scissors that are very good, but I don't know what they are. Here's my beater, my daily beater, the Wustoff four and a half inch uh, utility knife. So that's, I love using this thing as just like a cut on any surface, do whatever you need to do. Also, if you choke back on the grip, you can actually get this thing all the way down onto a cutting board which I do sometimes. Hmm. This is kind of random. Usually that Kikuichi is in this slot, but I've got the a super flex curved six inch Victorinox Fibrox boning knife. I like it because it's so crazy thin and the thickness behind the edge is very thin that this is a very nice slicing knife with a good full handle. This is a thinned out Richmond Artifacts 2 in CTS BD1N at 63 Rockwell. 
um, that Tojiro serrated knife came with this for free. This is a great knife to introduce you into Japanese knives. Great stainless steel that performs really well, um, but the geometry is pretty thick on these from the, from the factory. So that makes it very forgiving, but overly forgiving in my opinion. So in my, I feel like it needs to be thinned out, which is what I did. This is the knife that my wife uses. So she beats it up, uses it hard, puts it away wet. It's done great. Here's my chef knife, beater chef knife. This is a Wustoff Icon Classic 8-inch chef knife. I, yeah, I like it way more than I should. Um, I really do, and I especially I just I love getting after getting after it with it. I think the Messermeister is a better knife, but I really love the Icon. Next up is my kind of laser class knife, almost, is a Takamura uh, Chromax 210 Gyoto. I've thinned it out. Um, I've raised the, the blade road up and thinned it out. Didn't need it, but I did it. And uh, this thing's slicey. I like the stiffness of this blade a lot. I wish the handle was a little bit bigger. And the Chromax is pretty great, but a little bit brittle, but really great knife. Very slicey. And last is one of my favorite blades is a Miyabi 240 millimeter Mizu Kiritsuke SG2 steel at the core stainless cladding. Uh, this one came with a recurve, so I had to fix that. That was annoying. But this is a great knife. Love the micarta handle. Super comfortable. Great cutter. Really love this knife. So this is like my big prep knife. You know, if I'm cutting up tons of vegetables, I want to get kind of maximum per slice. And then just an Idaho uh, ceramic hone. I've been testing out these blade guide or not blade guides, honing guides from Wedgic uh, for because so I'm planning on giving a, some of these to my uh, my parents and my in-laws. So I'm just kind of testing those out. Um, yeah, and that's that's it. But it was a lot and it was fast. Um, I don't know how this whole video will come across. But I just wanted to share current state of the kitchen knife collection and kind of what I work with right now. Whatever's in the block is what I'm using a lot. But, you know, I use a lot of these other knives pretty frequently, like the Kikuichi, the Hanasuki, the Tojiro, um, Santoku, the Messermeister. Those get used quite a bit. Um, the Wustoff Santoku gets used a lot. Um, few others but this is kind of the mains so, yeah that's all i've got for you guys thank you for watching have a good one bye